Right, we're on. Hi folks, good to be with you. Uh, we're looking at the historical Jesus and about the crucifixion. And um, it's good to be with you. This is Mike and Jason and Royal Blood Ministries and we're going to do uh, crucifixion fact or fiction. You can get this uh, article on truthnet.org or dot com and uh, so do you want to read the, the first passage why would Jesus die for me yeah sure in the garden Adam and his wife enjoyed all the luxuries offered by paradise they ate of the finest fruits drank the purest water and dwelled in a place of perfection where there was no death as a test of God's authority, he forbade Adam the fruit of only one tree. Satan tempted Adam to transgress the authority of God. Adam was deceived by Satan, transgressed God's command, and was cast out of the garden. When Adam was cast out of the garden, he brought, he brought death to mankind. If Adam had not transgressed and remained in the garden, man would never have known death. Keep going, yeah, keep going. This is exactly what the Bible says. The Apostle Paul writes, Just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned, Adam's sin caused the death of all men. Not just Adam himself. The Bible also says the wages of sin is death. We will all die because Adam's sin brought death and sin to all. Since a man was the cause of sin and death, so too a man was needed to atone for sin. This man also had to be perfect, sinless himself, righteous. Only one man in history has qualified as sinless, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, so if by the one man's offence many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Further, the Bible explains why God would sacrifice his son for us, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. My dear friend, the God of all creation loves you, sacrificed his son for your sins, so you can become righteous and enter into heaven with him for eternity. The choice to accept the sacrifice of Jesus is your choice alone. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Ask Jesus to forgive you today and be your saviour. Amen. So, we, we can't understand the crucifixion unless we understand it in the biblical reference of mm. sin. Because man has fallen mm. and is a sinner, yeah. it needs to be atoned for, that yeah. sin. And yeah. man cannot atone for it because man is sinful. Yeah. So it had to be a perfect man. And that perfect man is the, is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who came and atoned, who died and took the punishment for our sin. Yeah. And God has to punish sin, doesn't he, Mike? He does because he's a just judge. He, yeah. If he didn't punish sin, then he wouldn't be a just just God. So he had to punish sin, but instead of punishing you, Jesus took the punishment for you as the sacrifice for you. Yeah. And if you believe that, then you're forgiven. Now, um, I want to just look at the historical evidence of the crucifixion. Was Jesus, was Jesus crucified on the cross? In Surah 4, 157, he said, They said, We killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they killed him not, nor crucified him. But so it was made to appear to them. And those who differ therein are full of doubts, and no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow. For surely they killed him not. So the Bible says in Matthew 27, 35, Then they crucified him, Mark 15, 24, And when they crucified him, Luke 23, 33, And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him, John 19, 27, Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garment. The Quran denies the crucifixion of Jesus. The Bible affirms it as fact. They cannot both be correct. How do we know which to believe? We'll get into the evidence, but look, do you want to... Make a comment on that, Mike, on those verses and anything. Yeah, um, with regards to Surah 4157, 
it's it's basically saying that God made it appear to them that Jesus was crucified or killed. Mm. It says, but they killed him not, nor crucified him, but it was made to appear to them. So basically, Allah, God, as they call it, they're saying that to the people there, they believed that God killed him and he was crucified, but he wasn't crucified. So basically, Allah is responsible for creating the world's biggest false religion, according to this passage. Because yeah. if, if Christ isn't crucified, as the Quran says, then Allah's the cause of it for making people believe something that's not true. Wow, that's powerful. Um, why would God... And it actually goes against your own Quran. The Quran says, one, per, the one will not bear the sin of another, shall not bear the burden of another in your own Quran. Mm. So, basically, it also says that... I've heard some Muslims say that he put the appearance of somebody else and made it look like Jesus, but it was somebody else. So that goes against your own teachings as well. Okay, so... Uh, evidence that Jesus died on the cross. Number one, eyewitnesses, a centurion, a centurion, an officer of over 100 men, guarded Jesus as he died on the cross. Matthew 27, 54. The Roman soldiers who beat Jesus sat and watched him die. Matthew 27, verse 27, 30, 36. Chief priests, scribes and elders all watched Jesus die. Matthew 27:41 Many unnamed women whom Jesus had known watched him die Matthew 27 verse 55 Family in John chapter 19:25-27 Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister do you think his mother would know whether he died or not Definitely Yeah so now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene, and when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing by, he said to his disciple, his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. John nineteen twenty-five to 27. Uh, extra biblical information outside the Bible uh, that confirms the Bible. Thallus, 55 AD, an ancient historian who wrote a three-volume history, in volume 3, Thallus mentions the darkness that occurred at the death of Jesus, mm. just as recorded in Matthew 27, 45, Mark 15, 53, Luke 23, 44. Thallus certainly was not no friend of Christians. He attempted to attribute the darkness to a solar eclipse, a natural phenomenon rather than a miracle of scripture. And tradition proclaimed Julius Africanus rebuffed Thallus' argument years later by noting that Jesus was crucified during Passover, which occurs during the full moon. A solar eclipse cannot occur during a full moon. Cornelius Tatticus, 55 to 120 AD, disrespected Roman historian, had a disdain for Christians calling them believers in a most mischievous superstition. Nevertheless, Tatticus confirmed that this sect was formed from followers of Christus who suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of Pontius Pilate. The term extreme penalty refers to crucifixion, the most extreme form of punishment used during the Roman Empire. Lucian of Samosa, 115 to 200 AD, a well-known satirist and lecturer, Lucian refers to Christians as poor, wretches, and foolish people who accepted such things on faith alone without evidence. He also calls them ones who worship the man in Palestine who was crucified because he brought this news from a form of initiation into the world. Lucian further mocks Christians for believing that they are all brothers the moment they transgress and deny the Greek gods and begin worshipping that crucified sophist and living by his laws. These and other hostile sources clearly affirm the historical fact of Jesus' crucifixion hundreds of years before uh, Jibril visited Muhammad, so called. Any thoughts? And then we'll go into the last bit. Yeah, the, the historical evidence there is the evidence for the crucifixion, and the fact of it is far more compelling than what the Quran has to offer because. If the Quran is going to offer any kind of evidence to deny a, a fact, then it has to bring some itself, and it doesn't. That's it clearly good. doesn't. That is a good point, Mike. There's no solid facts mm. to base the Islamic claim that Jesus did not die on the cross. They have nothing, have they? Nothing at all. It's just. It's just. It it it, it makes no it makes no sense. So God God fooled people to believe Jesus died on the cross. 
and he was raised to life and then he starts Christianity and he, oh it's not true but then 600 years later oh it didn't happen it, was, it just seems it just doesn't seem some God wouldn't it just seems a hash a mess it's not a it doesn't seem like a God who knows what he's talking about it sounds like a man's thoughts it sounds like a man's opinion than God's to be fair ok uh, prophecies of Jesus concerning his crucifixion Matthew 16, 21, from that time on, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and be killed and be raised the third day. Matthew 17, 22, 23, Jesus 17, 22, 23, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men, and they kill him, and the third day he will be raised up. Mark 10, 45, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Luke 18:31-33. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going to Jerusalem, and all things that are smit, written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles; they will scourge him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. The Apostle Paul wrote, For I delivered you first of all that I was received, that Christ died for the sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose on the third day according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 34, 15, verse 3 and 4. Paul, as well as other apostles of Jesus, with the exception of John, were so, so convinced of the death and resurrection of Jesus that they were willing to die as martyrs rather than recant this term testimony. Many men are willing to die for something they believe to be true, but no man is willing to die for that which is known to be a lie. Evidence of the Quran, for, for crucifixion from the Quran, Surah 19, 33. Jesus speaks as an infant and says, So peace is on me the day I was born, and the day that I die, and that day I shall be raised up to life. Even the Quran, Jesus predicts his death. A few verses earlier, Surah 1915, the statement is made concerning Prophet Yahya. So peace is on him the day he was born, the day that he dies, mm. and the day will be raised to life. Conclusion if Jesus was not crucified and God substituted someone else instead, we must conclude the following three things about God. God is unjust because he crucified someone unwillingly for crimes he did not commit. God actually unjustly took towards Mary since they sincerely believed Jesus died on the cross. Allah fooled her. And three, God acted unjustly towards Christians for six centuries until Muhammad recited Surah 4157. Without leaving any credible evidence that Jesus did not die on the cross, God continues to act unjustly towards all people today by failing to provide such evidence. So, last thought to you, God. Yeah, the evidence for the crucifixion and the cross is far greater than, than anything that Islam brings. The only evidence they've got is what the Quran says, it, and that's it. And we're meant to just believe it. So, if they're going to make a claim that's in the life history, then it has to... It has to be more compelling than that and it just doesn't it just leaves a big question mark on what the Quran's claiming and it 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 raises more questions than it does answers, but from the Christian position the question's raised and it's also answered, so I yeah. think we've got the odds are in our favour. Yeah, I think can we just talk just for a minute on Yeah, yeah. You know, we're looking at history. When we're looking at the cross, did Jesus die or not? We're looking at history. Yeah. And I've been studying the early sources of Islam in the historical writing. Mm. So Ibn Ishaq and the earliest writers. And, um, you know, in Ibn Ishaq, when you talk about chain of narration, that everything's been passed on chain of narration, even in your early source, uh, he, he, there are sources that he, he, he uses to write history, but he doesn't name the source. So... I'm not, what I'm saying there is, is that this claim of chain of narration is just bombastic nonsense. Yeah. Because you can't prove your chain of narration when you look at your early source, this Ibn Ishaq. It, it, it's quite clear that he, he, he used sources that he couldn't name. Yeah. Uh, secondly, he invented chronology. Yeah. Uh, thirdly, he invented poems. And even your own scholars of the time, uh, a great scholar in Hadith called Malik, actually said that he was, un, uh, he, he was not reliable. So, sorry, 
So this is uh, one of your earliest sources proves. Uh, you want? You got it. So so what? One of your earliest earliest sources. Um, I just wait. Mike, do you want to go in the front room? Yes. Sorry about this. Yeah. One of your earliest sources um, proves that uh, the chain of narration is just not justifiable. Um, you have uh, within those sources you have the mention of um, the satanic verses. Uh, so e if you were to prove the sources were reliable, then it would undermine. Uh, Islam totally 100%. So we're, we're in a situation where the chain of narration cannot be defended. Uh, and if you've had one of your early sources, uh, uh, there are other issues with the, one of your early sources that we only have edited material that we have, edited by other editors. So it's not like 100% pure, the actual original author. So there's the editing issue. Um, and then there is the verification issue. Where, what sources is the historian using? Can we um, rely on this historian? And uh, it seems to me that uh, it's not a question that we can't. He, he doesn't quote the sources accurately. It's a question that he just makes a lot of it up. So I just think that you've got serious issues. Uh, and there's no way that you can back up your chain of narration. I know there are many, many Islamic scholars and hadith collectors uh, that you can use to say that we have this chain of narration. But it, it, my argument stands that this is your earliest source. And if your earliest source is that faulty, then there's some real serious issues that you need to deal with uh, of why you feel that you can build a chain of narration and bypass this early source or not take into account this early source. I know that um, Bukhari uh, felt that his source was not uh, fully reliable, but he did uh, respect uh, this writer very highly. Are you alright? Yeah, sorry. just family. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I was just, all I was saying, Mike, about we're looking at historical data here yeah. and looking at it in a fair way we have historians and writers outside the Bible that confirm that Jesus died yeah. there's nothing like that in Islam to back up their claim that Jesus did not die Correct. and then when we look at the way Islamic history has been done concerning the life of Muhammad uh, in Ibn Ishaq there are serious problems with his, his history He's been known to invent chronology, he's been known to invent poems. These are not just Christian scholars, these are Muslim scholars of his time. Uh, Malik, who was a very famous uh, great Hadith scholar at the time of this writer, yeah. said that he was a liar. Mm. So, it's no good criticising the Bible. Again, you've got to get your own house in order. Your history is very, very weak and the chain of narration cannot be substantiated in any way uh, concerning uh, the scholarship there. So, any thoughts about that uh, before? Yeah, um, I think what Muslims need to do, you need to separate the the man of myth, Muhammad, from the real Muhammad, and this mythical idea that the Quran is perfect, it's got no errors in it, it's from heaven, angel Gabriel, you need to put that aside and look at what the evidence is pointing to. Mm. And it doesn't point to that, unfortunately. Mm. Mm. And I heard some Muslim apologists today, uh, I think John Fontaine or, or whatever, oh, yeah. you know, and there was another guy. Um, and they were talking about Josephus, and they were saying, how can you believe what Josephus says? Mm. Because he, he, he got things wrong. Yeah. Um, he got things wrong. He, he believed uh, in many gods, because even though he was Jewish, yeah. He, he, he kind of advocated the Roman pagan gods, right? So they're saying, you know, how can you believe uh, Josephus as opposed to, to what they're saying? Well, when you compare, compare Ibn Ishaq to Josephus, mm. Josephus didn't invent genealogies. He didn't invent poems. 
his, his scholarship was massive. If you read uh, his book uh, uh, on, on his historical method, uh, he, he, he used a wide variety of sources. Mm. He used a wide variety. Thirdly, the Jewish people were known in the oral tradition to pass things on accurately. Uh, third, fourthly, he used a wide variety of historical sources of his time. He used Roman documents. He wrote Jewish. He, he used Jewish documents. Uh, fifth, uh, ninety percent of the time, Josephus has been known to be accurate. Yeah. Archaeology said the tomb of Herod did not exist. Josephus said it did. He said the certain place, certain area where it was. Archaeologists today said no, it did not exist. They found the tomb and Josephus has been verified. Very often Josephus is verified. The only way area where he's often not accurate sometimes is when he's quoting numbers, numbers of armies, because he's using generals' documents uh, and sometimes he, 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 his uh, numbers are, are not correct sometimes. But generally speaking, he is an excellent historian, uh, whereas... Uh, Ibn Ishak, Ibn, sorry, he's honest as well. He's, he's honest, yeah. yeah. Ibn Ishak is a downright liar. He's invented absolute nonsense. He's invented poems and and genealogies, and therefore fabricate your your early history of Muhammad is a lot of it's fabrication. If this if this is your early source, and it is your early source, so it, it looks bad for Islam, it does. and it's good for Christianity. And Josephus is a million times better than Ibn Ishaq. Mm. And what's really, I think, really damaging to Islam, which I thought of recently, was the fact that you know, your Muslims invaded Jerusalem and they, they won the battle for Jerusalem. And you've got the Arkeza Mosque in Jerusalem. Mm. Yet, when Muslims do a pilgrimage, they go to Mecca. Now, they, they'll say that, oh, well, Mecca's the birthplace of Islam and all that kind of stuff. But Jerusalem is a holy site, and why this big... Why fight for Jerusalem if Mecca is the holy place? And you know the the uh, the night flying when Muhammad flew to the. Oh yeah. 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 He oh, he flew to he, Jerusalem. He flew to Jerusalem. That's correct. To the temple. And it wasn't built at the time. When it he wasn't just... built at the time. <laughs> yeah. So. So how do you work that one out? Yeah. So the, the I so read that. It's total the... lies again. It's in that book, The People versus Muhammad. It talks about that. At the time he went there, the, it actually hadn't been built. So if he had gone at the time, we, there would have been nothing there. So I don't know how you get out of that one, unless he's a time traveller. But I just do not see it. So anyhow, we've looked at the Godman, we've looked at the crucifixion. We've got all the historical data. Islamic history is very, very deceptive and very dishonest. It's political, isn't it? Political, and it, it lacks any real solidity and our history, we we have outside checks to check whether what is being said. Enemy attestation, attesting to our historical data. Yeah. Enemy attestation, attesting to the death of Jesus. Oh, there's another one as well. It says in the Quran, uh, we slew the Messiah not. Now, I don't know any Jew would, would call Jesus the Messiah. There's very few, there was a few Jewish converts, but if they're going to mock him and say, well... We slew the Messiah. They wouldn't have made that claim because you say the claim, you say the Quran is the literal word of God. So are they literally mocking him, or are they, is that a literal fact that they're saying that? That's brilliant. That's a good thought, that bro. So the, the we slew the Messiah. Well, Jews are waiting for the Messiah. Just to let you know, they don't believe Jesus was the Messiah. They're waiting for the Messiah. So they, I don't think they would have said we slew the Messiah. And you can't use the defence. Well, they were mocking him. That's so, a good point, that's a good yeah. point. Where'd you get that from, bro? There's something I thought of when I was reading it. Reading you should write that down, you should write that down. Okay, folks, we've done enough today. Um, what's that scholar that we read? Sarah Fatty, is it? Dr. Rafa Amari, is it? Dr. Rafa Amari. Rafa Amari, yeah. The Google Dr. Rafa Amari in Islam in the Light of History. Oh, my dear. That is a book to read, folks. And the People versus Muhammad is a good book as well. And the People versus Muhammad book. In, uh, Islam in the Light of History by Dr. Rafa Amari. Rafa Amari. I've been reading that. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, The Life of Mohammed. Oh, one more thing. I did mention Dr. Rafa Amari at Hyde Park. And guess what the Muslim response was? Oh, is he... What, is he a Christian? Whatever. Uh, yeah, he's a Christian. 
but before he's a, he's an Arab, and he knows he's done a twenty year research of Islam, and he knows the Arabic language, he knows the customs, and they mocked him and laughed at they laughed at that, because he was a Christian. Oh no, we we can't trust it. Well, to be honest, we can't trust Muslim scholars, my friend. Amen, amen. So God bless you. Thank you for listening, and check out Royal Blood Ministries. Just Google our name, and you'll find various things popping up on YouTube. Twitter, Facebook and website etc websites. So God bless you, love to everybody and thank you Mike for, for helping me. God bless you folks. God bless.